you know what? Now that I'm thinking of this uh, accurately, I could actually take the time and formulate some thoughts on all of this. Uh, so someone in the chat just asked, uh, what's your opinion on Katarina and Noctis? Which one is the scrubbiest? And scrubby is of course a horrible uh, name to use for such characters. We are respectful, we say, easy characters. And uh, I think it's uh, beyond any doubt, you know, that those characters are very easy. And when I've talked about this before, I've always put them at the top of the pyramid when it comes to characters that re require very little commitment, you know, and time to produce big results. And uh, I said this before, Mr. Mr. Huge Dreamer uh, Forsen, Forsen started playing Tekken. And I feel like you have a little... You had a little experiment there, like, what character should he play? He picked Katarina, his chat wanted it, he played with her, and within, what it, was it five days, he reached, uh, I think it was Juggernaut at the highest, but he was somewhere around, he fluctuated around Warrior, but I think he made it uh, as far as Juggernaut. And honestly, do you see him picking many other characters and being able to do that? within a few days and a lot of people love to say that oh Horang he's so fucking scrubby mash both kick buttons and you'll immediately have incredible results and he is a bit spammy you know with the flamingo down 3-4 and keep up the pressure but the thing with Horang is that you've put down quite a lot of work to be able to do that sure it's very difficult for the opponent to handle it but at the same time, it does take a lot of work to do that shit. It is more than just mashing four. With Horang, you need good timing for his flamingo, you need to know the options, there's some execution to it, believe it or not, if you haven't tried Horang, there is some execution to the character. Quite a lot, honestly. He's quite a technical character. And lo and behold, after Forsen's first week with Katarina, he switches to Horang, and what happens? As soon I, I never watched these streams, but as soon as someone told me switch to Horang, I was like, "Oh, big problem." He's played with Katarina. He starts feeling unmotivated. He actually says, "Katarina is holding me back," but I know that no, <laughs> Katarina's a crutch. You you've been able to lean on, and she has carried you with minimal work to Juggernaut. As soon as he switched to Horang, I knew, oh, the crutch is gone. You, you have a character that perhaps your chat says, oh, you'll get easy ranks, but no, you won't. You're, you're going to need decent timing here. You're gonna need execution, and you're gonna need a whole lot more moves than Katarina. A whole lot more tools of Horang's arsenal are gonna have to come out. Uh, and you're going to need to know how to do combos. You can't just mash four and get a combo. Um, so, please don't call me right now. Uh, so that was uh, what happened was that he, he got he was unmotivated, picked up Horang, and obviously with Horang, I think he couldn't make it uh, out of light blue ranks. I think he was expert rank or something like that, and it. He even learned to do a combo. Someone showed me that. Uh, but uh, he he just was held back. Uh, no, if, so what I'm just trying to say is that uh, he thought that Katarina was holding him back. Him back, he goes to Horang. And that's not going to do a whole lot for his motivation. Because suddenly it's like, I should be improving in my Tekken career. I've picked a new character, I've made it to Juggernaut with my first character. So now with Horang, with all I've learned, I should be able to make it even higher than Juggernaut. And suddenly he sees, I can't make it out of light blue ranks. So his whole concept of a game and what he thought was going to happen, just immediately like, no, nope, ain't gonna happen. And that's when he most, hopefully he realized that, okay, so with a lack of fundamentals, I could do good with Katarina. But with Huarang, oh, suddenly it's blatantly, blatantly, that's a new word I just made up. Suddenly it's blatantly obvious 
that I don't know a whole lot about the game. And naturally, naturally, because I've only played for a few days, it becomes super obvious with Horang, but it's not super obvious with, uh, with Katarina. Well, I mean, obviously it is, but you, you get away with a lot of shit with that character. Um, and that's also something I see a lot with uh, when I do my coaching, you know. For the most part, I'm sitting down trying to coach light blue rank Kazias or green rank Kazias. And you'd be amazed at their amazing fundamentals. They really know the game. But then you can sit down with uh, uh, a Katarina player who is Vanquisher. And his fundamentals are much, much worse. But he's made it to a much higher rank because the character is highly effective with l little effort. I'm not trying to uh, uh, talk shit about Katarina players here. I'm just trying to talk about, you know, the discrepancy between tech and characters, you know, and uh, how some characters are entirely constructed to carry players, like, for example, Katarina and Noctis. And players who, let's face it, Tekken is a very hard game. Maybe everyone doesn't want to sit down for 40 hours per week to try and get good, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. So they have those characters for those people. And then you have the complete opposite, a character like Kazia, who revolves around nothing but fundamentals. And it's for the people who say, I don't mind losing a thousand times before I get my first victory. And by God, that victory is going to be hard-earned, and that's what I like, you know. Uh, the difficult grind, climbing the mountain. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to get some uh, thoughts out on that. I find it very interesting. Um, yeah, that was a little talk. <laughs>